So yesterday morning, I woke up at 3 a.m. and I was woken up at 3 a.m. And I channeled the 2025 masterclass and it is called Jedi Masterclass. <laughs> because you are the Jedi and the force is within you, right? And it's an entire year of play which means that there isn't going to be metaphysical training. There is going to be play, 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 because the kingdom of heaven is within and it is an awesome playground. But I believe the reason that I absolutely needed to go through these two years was because in 2009, when my Kundalini came and I had all this energy and all this power and all this knowledge, it, it was like a child. It's like a, it was like a toddler, right? It was just like, I was just using it, doing it and being it. And I, there was no, like, there was no like leadership going on within me. I was just being led by spirit and put myself into some situations where a lot of that power got taken advantage of because I didn't really necessarily buy into the darkness. And I really didn't, perceive evil the way that, um, you know, I was, I was the love and light phase. It was like, oh, everything needs love, which is 100% true. But I believe that as humans, we go through what's called rite of passages and we call them dark nights. And the rites of passages are when you have to go into your own hell and you can't run from it. You can't medicate it. You can't buy it. You can't clean it. You can't fix it by something outside of you. It's, it's literally like a moment by moment, like relationship building, rebuilding. And so like huge amount of trauma as a child, ran away from it all, you know, married two times, Kundalini blow, turn into this healer, wellness centers going all around the world. And then it was kind of like, it kind of found its like plateau point. And then it was time for me to integrate all of it, integrate all of it with self-love. And so our entire masterclass this year, every ounce of your force, your power, your magic, your um, abilities, your spiritual gifts will never be disclosed to you until you reach self-love. That's God's clause. Because of the amount of power you have accessible to you, that is why. Because with infinite power comes infinite responsibility, Spider-Man, okay? Like legit. So you are only going to be capable of running power, using magic at the level of your own self-worth. Okay. And to me, the way that I got and am getting to self-love is through self-compassion and understanding and curiosity and listening so some of the things that we're going to be doing next year are going to be kind of projecting a three-point workability where you're going to be focusing one place on your mind, you're going to be focusing one thing on your emotions, and you're going to be focusing one place on your body, and then you're going to bring them together. Because what we're doing right now is we're just getting to know our demons, okay? And we're figuring out who stays and who goes and who's going to work as an ally and who's going to work as, as, you know, a pressure, because you're not going to want to release all of your shadow aspects um, because it does give you gumption. It does give you grit, you know, but the ones that the, the attachments, and I really don't like to use the word demons, but my inner child likes that word for some reason, but the attachments that we have on us from the shadow world that we all get, just by coming here, uh, we, we've got to get to that crossroads where it's no longer, it's, it, that shadow is no longer going to serve you. Okay. Cause remember like they are, the shadow is in service of you, whether you know that or not. And what I channeled yesterday was really fascinating. If any of you guys are, are curious about joining me next year, um, I have the full channel description a full, I mean, it's like 12 pages or something. I got up at three, stopped at 7.30. So it was a, a process. Thank God for Yash, he edited it, hopefully. Either way, you guys get it. It's a child's writing, but you can get the, you can get the idea. And it basically talks about how that the system, the matrix we call the matrix is not the same as the underworld. It's not 
the same thing. It's like where the the game makers, I'll call them that because that's a nice way to say what they are, but they're a group of beings that have um, turned away from the light and yet they remain very empowered through through in, in taking the power of others. And, and again, because Earth is the living library, it is very habitable for many different species and many different galactic access points. There's wormholes that are really easy to get to Earth and Earth has always been like the living library. So because, because she always goes through this expansion compression process, she's always zip driving her information. So it's a great place for ETs to study rocks, gems, because you can see every civilization in one grand, grand of sand. So Earth is very desirable and it can also house 12 dimensions. So it's not just like, oh, it's a ninth dimensional planet. No, Earth is a 12th dimensional planet, which means it has all 12 division, 12 dimensions housed within it. And we happen to be on the third dimension part of the world where I would say you got your dream house, but it was it was built over an Indian burial ground. So what the warlords did was they found a part of Earth that was on top of the underworld access point. Now, what is the underworld? It's where the lost souls are magnetized. OK, they don't have jurisdiction to be all over this planet. But in this particular part of the world, because the, the planet is different than the world. Got to understand that. You'll, you'll, you guys are going to learn more about this in the coming years when disclosure hits, okay? But the world is where we have integrated and where we have incarnated. Now, if you look at the Bible, it's this particular part of the world is between two firmaments, which is two bodies of water, okay? So the heavens are above and the underworld is below, and then the child of God comes down into what we would call a dualistic world, okay? And the dualistic world is because it has access points to both heaven and hell or heaven and the underworld. And when you come in, right, you are coming in as a child of God. You're coming in from the heavens. You're not coming from the underworld. If you were in the underworld, you wouldn't be listening to this class. And you'd probably be way smarter than any other human, but you'd be working for the wrong team, okay? So we come down here and we're like, oh, yay, playground, right? But we don't know that our home is built on top of an Indian burial ground. And so it's immediately a haunting when you get here. Now, the warlords know this. This is the part that I feel like humanity needs to understand to really get clarity. Why am I here? I want to go home. No, you don't. This is what's going on. Is the warlords go, this is where we want to create slaves, because by creating a slave system here, they're going to come down. The children of God, all powerful beings are going to come down here and they're going to start getting haunted. They're going to start getting shadow aspects on them because of the underworld. And then they're going to be controllable. So one thing we want to understand is you, the child of God, has never been able to be controlled. And here's how I have proof. Try to control a toddler. <laughs> Edward knows you can't I mean you keep that child alive but you basically do 99% of what that child wants to do and that's how you know what's up okay so the child of God cannot be controlled but when the child of God gets too many pressurized blankets or entities or uh, shadow spirits on top of them okay well then that part of them it can be controlled. So let's say a child is dealing with a parent with a lot of fear. So by the power of influence and by the power of I want to be like my mom, I will accept the shadow aspect of fear. And that will then the shadow aspect will come in as a vibrational match to me. And it will download into my mind. If my mind accepts it, then my emotions will say, who are you? And you will say, Luke, I'm your father. And I'll be like, okay. And now it's like the emotions believe that it is you. And once the emotions tell the body, it's over. It's a download. So it's a three-part process before it becomes animated. That is your key word, 
animated. So when a shadow infiltrates the mind and you don't know the difference between that thought and you, you will accept that thought because the thing is, is the shadow aspects are using your coherence patterns. And so when they speak to you, they speak in your voice. So kids will be like, I'm beautiful. And then one day they'll be like, I'm ugly because they're starting to listen to the voices. And as soon as they accept the mind information as their own, they don't challenge whether it's theirs. They're not like, oh, this is your thought, mom. They're like, oh, I want to be like my mom. Yes, that's my thought too. Now, here's the problem with it is that the inner child within you never accepts that. Never. That's why you don't know you have half of the negative aspects on you right now. It's because the inner child has never accepted that as its own. It's almost like, yeah, that's a voice in my head, but that's not me. But yet you allow it to animate you. And once it infiltrates the emotion, remember, mind is masculine. The mind is going to tell the emotions what's going on. The emotions is going to go, okay, now we feel a certain way. That's going to create the soundtrack, the electrical storm, the electromagnetic energy to then permeate and download the data into the physical body. Once the body has the thought, the emotion mixed together, it becomes real. The word belief, be alive. So now that belief becomes animated and it has nothing to do with who you are as a child of God. And this is why I say you have never had a bad thought. You have never been unworthy. You have never felt unworthy. You have never thought of yourself as unworthy. But the spirit of unworthiness speaks to you through your voice. And you have bought in to it. You have invested in it. You have given attention, which creates intention, which creates inspired action. So this is how we play out a belief. We give our attention to the voice. That creates an intention. Perfect example. The voice says, I'm so fat. No one loves me. Right? Okay. Now, my intention is, I got to lose weight. My inspired action is I'm looking for a diet. You see how fast and, and easy that was. When are we going to go, wait, who's saying this? Hold on. Who's here? New phone, who this, right? Like, I'm here. What, what's happening? So when you can get to that neutral observer point, and this is why Matrix is a good one to watch, because we could see how difficult it was for Neo without Morpheus, okay? That is just hacking in, hacking into my own mainframe here. Who's this? Have you ever thought to question, am I really hungry? Have you thought to question, am I really worthless? Because the thing is, is the child of God that's underneath all the shadow, it, it rarely gets its voice. It, be, it rarely gets its own desires met and it barely gets to be animated. I was talking to someone yesterday and I was like, how are you and your inner child? Oh, good. I'm loving on them, whatever. And I'm like, are you playing? Well, I don't really let them play. Okay. So, right. So it's like, okay, you're a loving kind father, but you're talking to the kid in the jail cell. And I will tell you where you're going energetically is going to be through 12 stage initiation process that started with the pandemic. Okay, your initiation through the dark night is going to be a collective initiation. You will experience your initiation very different than someone else based on your belief systems, your ability to know who's in here, who's thinking for you, and who and what is controlling your body. So I think we did a little example of like feeling energy in your body. If you feel no energy in your body when you focus on it or when someone's doing energy work on, on it, that is a red flag that you are not anywhere near the body. And the you, the child of God, the omnipresent, immortal, unlimited creator has a voice 
It has desires, it has hopes and dreams and all these amazing things, and it needs to come to the forefront. Doesn't mean that you're gonna have to fight against all these spirits, no. The self-compassion and the self-love and the grace that you have been creating throughout this entire year of our superhuman class is all you need to be able to speak to that thought or that entity. I, I think my word for it's gonna be attachment because it attaches to you kind of like a tick and you won't see it right away, it, but it's going to be sucking on your energy. But once it infiltrates the body, it becomes a possession, which means you possess it, you own it. Okay. Now it needs to be exercised out and through the exorcism process. I know it sounds really like harsh, but there, there's different levels of possession. So my son and I were having this conversation today and he is, you guys, he is thriving in elementary school. Like I told, I've been teaching him how to cast out these spirits. And not only is he becoming like super popular in school, he's teaching his friends how to do this. The seventh grade football team um, came outside this morning as he was getting out of his car to greet him. Yeah. And he's teaching everybody how to cast out demons at school. Yes. <laughs> he went from getting bullied uh, within like a two week period. Right. And at first he wasn't even sharing anything. He was just like doing it with his mind and stuff. And then he befriended the big Samoan security guard and everybody would see him hanging out with this big security guard every day or sharing muffins. And they're like, well, that kid's cool. Right. So now, again, not by any, oh, I want this person to like me, the story he used to run all the time. Now he's just being himself. And now he's attracting more more of a fun playground for himself. That's what I can say there. So all we're going to need here is the awareness that I can never have a negative thought. I want you to say that out loud right now. I, the I am within me, can never have a negative thought. The I am within me doesn't have negative feelings towards others. So... What's happening, right? You've been putting yourself on the cross every time you're in judgment of yourself, every time you're in judgment of someone else. So one of the things that we're going to be learning uh, probably in this next month or so is the power of a curse. So when you say anything about yourself negative, you are cursing yourself. It's a real legit curse because your voice is God. And God says, I love you so much. Whatever words come out of your mouth, yes. Yes. And whether it matches the kingdom of heaven or the kingdom of hell, you will draw in a spirit to help you with that. So let's say this, right? I'm feeling unworthy. So I feel like, oh, I feel guilty, right? So then I feel the guilt. I, I hear the guilt. I feel the guilt. I start acting guilty. Well, now what I'm doing is creating the trinity of creation. And now I'm going to magnify and I'm going to bring in other guilty attachments, more spirits that align with guilt. So now I've got gangs coming in from the underworld like, ooh, house of guilt. I want to live here. Yeah, that's a vibrational match. Okay. Or I could say, okay, the child of God doesn't understand guilt because the God knows that I'm down here to get attachments on me to send them to the light and make heaven where the underworld used to be. You, you guys realize this is our job is we are contractors. We are, we are here in a reconnaissance mission. We're here to make this place heaven on earth, which means that all of the entities that you have on your body right now, in your mind, in your emotions, in your field, in your home, in your car, in your relationships, in your money, everywhere, all are your dominion, okay? And your role is to be aware of them, have compassion, understanding for them, validate their support because they definitely have served you somehow, and then bring them to the light, okay, through gratitude, gratitude. You casting out a demon through resistance or judgment, you ain't casting nothing out because you have to be in the frequency of God 
to have the power of God. Okay? So if you're in the power of judgment, then you got no power at all. And you're going to start to feel real bullied by by the entities because they're going to be like, oh, look at this person casting out spirits who's actually in judgment. Don't they know they're the same vibration as us? Don't they know? They keep doing that. They're going to turn into a fallen angel. Because to me, a fallen angel is, is, a, is a human angel that has completely suppressed the child of God within to the point of righteousness and reads the Bible and studies the, the word, but is using the word through a negative resistant judgmental expression and eventually the child of god will give up the body will die and the soul will be stuck in the underworld but that soul very intelligent very wise very religious okay so you do not want to risk the role the, the the route of feeling spiritual and being a walking demon because that's why I asked this morning in the little live is how alive do you feel, right? How joyful are you throughout the day? How excited are you for the next moment? Are you in anticipation of what miracles I'm going to manifest today? Or what am I going to avoid today? Or what's going to happen today? Because again, what we want to do is we want to get so aware of who is thinking through us, who is feeling through us? Who is animating us? Who is walking around your body? Who is putting the food in? Who is letting the words come out? Because again, it's like, it's called a shadow for a reason. You're not going to see it unless you look for it. You're not going to hear it unless you hear for it. You're not going to feel it unless you feel for it. Okay? Now, the inner child gets this sense of like <gasps> haunting. I feel like I'm being haunted. So then the inner child wants to live in the future. It wants to make the vacation plans. It wants to plan a trip over here because it's trying to stay away from how it feels in this now moment. And the spirits that are running the show, haunting your house, living your life, speaking to your children, raising your children, working in your job, you realize that these lost souls cannot be animated without a host. So, and they, some of these, you know, these entities, these attachments have been with you maybe even since the womb. They're going to be more familiar than God is to you. But here's the thing is what I realized is I, I hit this switch and I was like, okay, I've been playing with the underworld my whole life, even as a teacher, even as a mom staying somewhat loving, you know, give away what I have and empty my cup and fill myself back up. But see, the child of God is never empty, ever. <laughs> Ask Edward about his, his child. He's like, where's the off switch, right? And when they go down, they go down and they come back up. And it's like, fully alive. I'm fully alive. So the more alive someone is, is how less attachments they have, you guys. It has nothing to do with they, what they eat or how much they work out. It is how many attachments negatively are animating through you. That's going to be your vitality, your youth, your level, your ability to play, your ability to allow yourself to play, okay? Your ability to create an amazing playground for yourself. Because one thing that I've done over the last two years is I've documented everything I have gone through. Everything. OK, I will put it in a book one day, but right now it's just like my it's it's my journal. It's my journey. And I, I'm going to I called it like I'm dying to live. Right. Because literally parts of me felt like they were dying and that they needed to in order to fully live. And you have to lose to win. Right. This entire process is about letting go. It is about failing in 3D. And being, yep, I'm supposed to. Because if I win in 3D, that means that I'm a dark, uh, that I'm that I'm a fallen angel. If I win in 3D, I am full fallen angel. Because that means I bought into the system. I played the system's game. I listened to the voices, right? I lost my inner child. And yet I'm successful and I'm rich and I'm probably famous. Okay? And the way darkness plays, ee, scary. 
Okay, not not joyfully fun, and it's it's not a win win process. It's all about humiliation and shame and guilt and sacrifice. That's how the dark plays. Now, let's say your initiation into the shadow was humiliation and sacrifice. So you 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 did agree to come here. So you did agree to get initiated into the shadow. So now you're going to go through a 12 step process of initiation that's going to take you back into the light. And Mother Earth is going to help being the living animation of our process. So obviously the Mayan calendar ended in on December 21st, um, right? 2012. And that was the end of the shadow being able to regenerate, which means now the shadow world that we have left is like a facade that we have content. We keep it going and breathing. We keep the slaves employed because we are keeping those fearful attachments. Okay. If you did not have fearful attachments, you would not work a job. <laughs> you would not because you would be like, that's fear. That, that's my motivation. Okay. Um, and things would work out for you. So, and, uh, and again, right now, I only have the first five stages of the initiation because that's all they will let me know. Okay. So the first one is the pandemic. The second one is the earth purge. Mother earth shaking out all her emotion that's been trapped everywhere that we have polluted our emotion is what she's shaking out right now through weather. It's dispersing it. It's cleansing it. It's getting rid of char blocks of anger charge, you know, blocks of where rage has been stored. It's clearing everything out. It's like spring cleaning Gaia style through hurricanes and floods and all this stuff. Okay. So this is the second initiation. The third one is going to be disclosure and it's going to be it's going to go like wildfire as soon as your election hits. Okay. And this will be, like I said, the last presidency. And then you will start to step in as a sovereign governor of yourself because Trump will be the last president. Okay. Which I said in 2014. So that's going to wrap that story up. That's disclosure. And then we have the reset. And why I have been pushing you guys so harshly this this year telling you about these timelines because the reset is going to determine what side of the veil you reset so it's it's like oh the money's going to reset no 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 you're going to reset and you will go into amnesia depending on what side of the fence you're on which means that let's say you reset into joy and love you're going to forget a lot about all of this stuff emotionally, especially that you, we have gone through. You will not feel the charge of your childhood. You will not feel any of the negative energies that have to do with any of your heartbreaks, which means you will not be motivated by pain anymore in that reset. Now, if you're going to hold on to these attachments and you're going to not, you know, learn how to govern your mind and you're going to let your body be a buffet of the underworld, well, no matter how much spiritual teachings you are taking in, you will find yourself reset and you won't even know it. Okay? Because what they usually do is collapse the system and then they hide Rome. They hide Rome every time and then they bring Rome back up through a different stage of Disneyland. But Rome is actually the Catholic Church. So that's Rome will fall. If you look at the book of Revelations, all of these initiations are in there. But the way they're going to show up for mankind are going to be different. Now, the way that your pandemic was might have been different than the way mine was. So you see, we'll go through these 12 initiations. But how we go through them will either be like, I'm sorry, but the pandemic for me, it was so fun. I had a great time. My kid didn't have to go to school. Like I worked online. I got to see clients, you know, it was, I got to work on my house. Like I, I was bored sometimes, but it was not like, I never wore a mask. I never got COVID, none of it. So I didn't go through any of that shit that other people went through. So that was my first initiation. Now the second one, the purge. Oh, I've been feeling that one. I'm going right with mother nature on that one. I'm with that purge. And so if you're resisting your purge, because you are the micro of the macro, 
Okay. And the pandemic was all about slowing down and shaking off the programming of go, 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 go. Also, it was facing you to look at yourself. It was facing you to look at your emotions. It was facing you to look at fears that you have. It also showed you how much mass control you, the world had so you could wake up to that illusion. Pandemic, super important for your evolution. Purge, essential. You will not be able to build the kingdom of heaven within you if your house is run by the overlord world. Now, how does that work before I get into our last step here? Okay. You're going to have to wait, buddy. Um, how it works is the overlords, the ones that need earth slaves for source energy. They do They do not have their own source energy, so they... they Take our source energy through fear, anger, okay, resistance, avoidance, denial, rejection, abandonment, any sort of suffering, any sort of judgment, um, any sort of contempt, uh, bitterness, resentfulness, rage, martyrism, sacrifice. Any of those energies are food for the overworld's system to run. Generator. That's the generator that they use is our lower vibrational energy. Our light is too harsh for them because it's too much of a vibrational discord. So their perfect energy source from us is our shadowed energy. The shadowed energy, which means the anger, which is light slowed down. Joy slowed down becomes anger, okay? So they love the negative energy because it's shadowed. It's like, ha, ah, like the vampire can't have the sun. So this is why they built this part. The seven continents that you are experiencing are on top of what's called the underworld. Now, the underworld is not employed by the overlords. It's just the location was perfect. Because if a child of God came in to the seven continents not on top of the underworld, our light would be too bright and we'd be like, get out of here. <laughs> we don't need your consumerism. So what they did was they built, what the overworlds overlords did is they built Disneyland for the underworld. So the matrix is Disneyland for the dead. Think about this. It's suffering. Work is suffering. Money, suffering. The food, suffering. So it's, and again, what is the, what is the underworld want to animate? That which what it is. So, oh, I died in grief. Yay! Now I get to feel grief going to this job every day. So the underworld gets to animate itself and have a full Disneyland, and that's what the Matrix is. But the child of God comes in, is like, "What? Well, I don't want to go to school. Like, I, I don't want to be controlled. Like, I, what? What? I don't want money, right? So you need some shadow on you." And then you're like, "Yeah, let's get some money." And so now all of a sudden you become animated. Right. And depending on how deeply into the system you get, will show you the health of your inner child and the health of your physical body. So what I would say our team or our group of renegades are, are we're rebels. We're the rebel alliance. We have come down here to remember, first deal with our own shadow aspects. And then what happens when your house becomes the lighthouse and you're okay with the attachments coming in because you're you're greeting with them with love. They won't want to stay. Okay. They'll either go somewhere else or you'll bring them to the light. But what you're doing is you're actually bringing God's children home, which what why you're here. And your body is not able to hold so much shadow anymore because you're not a vibrational match to it because your compassion and love and, and guilt and shame don't want to live in a body full of compassion and love. And they can't even get near you if they're really in that vibration. And so then what you can do is you can be the lighthouse and you can help other people with their attachments this is what Jesus was doing. It's like, I'm, I'm good. I had my 40 days and 40 nights. Well, let me help you. So what happens is you move back into that 
that toddler energy level, that toddler curiosity, that toddler like idea of the world, but you have the wisdom, you have the compassion, you have the understanding, you have the awareness, you have the intelligence. And so now you are like the best of both worlds because you fully understand the dark, embrace the dark, know the purpose of the dark. You see how it fuels the system and so here's the thing is you're going to do what the system tells you to do as long as you have attachments on you. When you start to remove these attachments, your coordinates will change. And when your coordinates change, that means now instead of listening to the system and the underworld, you're going to be listening to the spirit of joy because you're going to remember that you can call that spirit in too. Because you've been calling in the shadows to hide you, to keep that guilt program going to keep you feeling unworthy. But did you realize you could also call in right now? I call in the spirit of joy. Close your eyes, put your hand on your tummy, your left hand on your belly and feel the buzz. You might be so disconnected from your body. It takes a minute, but it's there because when you ask, it's given. And every spirit is in the master level of command of you, whether it's a good spirit or a bad spirit. So if you go, oh man, I'm such an idiot. There's a spirit like, I'm here at your command to prove and animate that you are. If you say, I call in the spirit of joy because I'm a joyful being. And joy, I would like for you to stay here all day in my body. Why not? Okay, why not start using the Rebel Alliance to call it in? You are Luke. Yes, you are the force. You don't even need the lightsaber. You are the lightsaber. Your heart is the lightsaber, okay? Call in the joy. Call in the giggles. Call in the fun. Call in the play and say, you know what? I This job really sucks, but I know I have an attachment that is making me believe I need this money. So while I'm here, I'm also going to call in the spirit of play and joy. So at least my job will be more joyful. Now, that's going to cause a little inner war. But the thing is, is joy... Joy doesn't have any problem playing with suffering. Suffering is the one that doesn't like joy. You see? Because like, have you ever been enjoying someone's suffering and you're like, come on, let's go do something fun, right? So you want that kind of, you want that kind of contradiction because then it's going to help you question yourself more. If you're just on a broken record of always listening to your shadows, well, you're not really going to know the difference between you and them. And that's why I need to say this again, is you have never had a negative thought. Because you're going to go, well, is that a spirit or is that me? Was it negative? It ain't you. You are a child of God. And I remember when my kids were little, they did not have racism. They did not have judgment. They did not care about money. They did not care how they looked. They didn't care how you looked. They didn't care whether your house was clean. They just wanted to love, play, explore, adventure, be curious, try things, do things, be things, play things, pretend things. So any of that other stuff isn't you. So that's your safety mechanism. Anything that's not happy, joyful, love is not me. So in order, and you'll see 5D is a paradox. Everything that we're moving towards first has to be experienced the opposite. So you have to go into separation of these voices with yourself. I'm not asking you to separate from mankind. I'm asking you to separate from this voice. And when the voice says you're an idiot, I want you to turn towards it and say, who is this? Because if you listen, you're not separate. And it can animate through you because you didn't challenge it. If you went, mm, yeah, and then 10 more reasons why you're an idiot are going to show up. And now you've got a gang living there that is going to remind you all during the day. And if you let the emotions grab hold of that belief, then not only will you think you're an idiot, you will feel like an idiot and you will do idiotic things and be like, why did I just do that? Because you are animating yourself. You're turning your God power. You're turning your bio quantum computer over to the shadow. Now, I'm going to throw a disclosure in there because some of it feels really good. Some of it, it feels really good to be angry. It feels really good to be petty. It feels really good to have a pity party. And so sometimes those shadows are really hard to not let animate you. 
especially when they have fully possessed your mind and it's all you can think of. And now you're just in the story and you're just like, your adrenaline is rushing. And now that spirit of anger is living through your entire God's body for that moment. Now that spirit will live in that anger until all your sugar is gone. You wonder why you go, I just got over it. No, you didn't. You ran out of fuel for the dark. And then that's why they're like, go eat some more. So we can get angry again in two weeks. They wait until your biological levels, glucose levels can handle another rage moment. And that's why it triggers. So that's why it never lasts. But if your body had infinite levels of fuel, you would literally be walking rage. Okay, and this is why they got to go drink baby blood because they got to get more fuel. All right, so think about that. You're not getting over anything when you don't send it to the light. You've just ran out of fuel. And so now they want you to go fall in love and watch a Disney movie because the only real energy you ever generate in your body is love. You don't actually get real energy from food. You don't really get energy from, you know, doing whatever humans do. You get energy from, from being in love, from being excited, from being joyful, from laughing, right? Moving your body and generating electromagnetic currency through the, the other four elements of yourself. That's how you generate energy. And that's why you'll have a real low. And then it's like, all of a sudden you're inspired and you're working out every day and you're eating really good. And you just met someone cool because now your levels are at a place where you are the perfect place to create a rage moment. And then you're done. Okay. So for the rest of this year, guys, we are children. You are allowed to be a child. If you try to logic too much, no fun. That's not fun. It, you're, the rest of this way, the rest of this way, I'm going to tell you how you get to this point, self-compassion. There's no like mathematical equation that you need to study here. All you need to do to get to this point where you start to recognize is have compassion for the really horrible things that you've said and done that have happened to you. And that will create the space, the understanding and the God consciousness now to look within the dark with love. That's all you need, self-compassion. Self-compassion for what this game actually is self understanding and this will help you understand the other ones around you that are having their demonic outbreaks when they become animated because have you noticed your partner isn't always an asshole it's just sometimes <laughs> your partner isn't always lazy it's just sometimes so in those sometimes is when they are animating so you have to understand that there might be negative attachments on you that live in you that live in your cells organs but they don't necessarily animate you because they have to use the light, right? They're, they get enough power generated, so they will use the light. But there are some negative entities that are just parasitic in nature, and they just feed off reserves in your body. And they're usually going to be residing in your gut bile. That's where most of your serotonin is produced. And so a lot of your life force energy is food for uh, the those, parasit those parasites. And we will I will show you guys how to clear clear that stuff out. Uh, we won't have time today, but we'll, I'll show you how to clean that out. And you want to clean out your chalice, which is what they call it. The chalice is at least once a week, because again, if you feel any like bloating or pressure in your tummy, or you feel like insecure about your tummy, you've got energy parasites. And I don't mean physical parasites. You probably have those too, but that's a byproduct of macro micro. Get rid of the energy ones first, and then you won't be able to have the physical ones because like attracts like. Okay. But that's what's feeding, but that's not going to animate you. That's not going to make you go punch someone that might make you crave sugar. That might make you crave salt, but that's not going to go punch someone. So you want to look at like, like we've got the elementals, it's really tiny, tiny spirits. We've got spirit sprites. We've got fairies. So again, if we were going to look at the spirit kingdom, we've got little tiny, tiny ones that serve for magic purposes, all the way up to like archangels, right? That are omnipresent in nature, that are collective in nature, which means they're one angel, but Archangel Michael is not one person, it's a collective. So when you look at that, you wanna look at the shadow world has the exact same profile. 
because it's the inversion. And so it's going to have its micro attachments, the little parasitic negative spirit or lack of source connection. And it's going to need a host. A spirit sprite does not need a host. It's just like, I'm here, I'm magical. But the negative attachment is going to be like, I need to live, I need to find a host. <laughs> so it will find something in the animal, light, plant, or human kingdom to attach onto. And then it gets higher in our hierarchy, like the, the states of the consciousness. So there's going to be more aggressive attachments. Now, how do you get big attachments on you? So like people go, I'm not, I'm not, I don't have entities on. I'm not possessed. I'm like, really? <laughs> Everyone is. So, but when you really start to look at someone who's really possessed, who's like, ah, like someone's on the street, just like talking to the wall. I just want you to know in order for that to happen, you have to constantly be giving up your power because that does not happen easily because you do have an army of light around you. Even if you're not talking to them as much as you're talking to the dark or listening to them as much as you're listening to the negative ones, they are there and they are way more powerful and they do not suck your energy. They actually download energy to you. So it is the opposite experience and they will download life force energy into your physical vessel two times a day, into your belly and into your heart. So you're getting a refill of source energy two times a day, whether you like it or not. And what you do with it, it's up to you. So in this idea of this negative spirit world, they are hosting off of you and the light spirits are illuminating you and feeding you. OK, but think about what you give your energy to most of the time is the needs and the wants. How often do you feel satisfied? Because that's what the light's going to make you feel. It's going to feel like a satisfied celebration, excitement, energy, but I don't necessarily need anything or really. Yeah, I might be motivated or inspired, but I don't need anything in this now moment when they're when they're in that space. <clears throat> OK, so you really want to understand that you have both. You have both, both armies at your disposal. And I mean that because when the dark is, is haunting you, it's you who's calling them in by listening to them, by letting them animate your body, by reacting. Look at that word, to act again. Okay? You're reanimating with your outburst. What we want to do is feel the demonic energy moving into the emotion. The emotion is going to create the inspired action. That's when the observer wants to catch it and be like, okay, I, I'm here. I feel you. You're with me. This is, this is the spirit of anger, right? This is the spirit of judgment. This is the spirit of gossip. This is the spirit of resentment. And then you're going to manually calm your body down just like you would a child before you react. Because if you react, you animated. And that, God looks at that as a choice you are choosing that character in that moment and those patterns are deeply ingrained they've been with you since childhood so i know they feel like your personality but they are not okay